Black Ops 2 is objectively the worst of the Black Ops and Black Ops 4 is the best man. Get nostalgia out of your mind and think again. Now this I would say is a rare opinion. I would go so far as to say it's usually the opposite way around. The comment comes from a video where I got to round 100 on one map from each Treyarch Zombies game and I said Black Ops 2 was the most fun when getting to round 100 and Black Ops 4 was by far the least fun. And I'm not gonna lie when I read this comment at first I was slightly triggered. His only premise for his conclusion was nostalgia and to me when I I feel nostalgic about something like a movie for example if I watch that movie again I usually don't enjoy it like I thought I did because I've grown up or because it really never was that good anyway I just look at it through rose tinted glasses but if something truly is good and you have nostalgia for it it is still good and so that's the main point of this video is Black Ops 2 one of the most love zombies games because it's good or is it just the nostalgia driving the love for the game and so we'll get to round 100 on transit die rise mob of the dead buried and Origins. And in a future video, I'll get to round 100 on all the Black Ops 4 maps. I've barely played Black Ops 4, so that would be good. I've only got round 100 on one of those maps, so I'll see if that truly is one of the best of the Black Ops games. And so I really just hope you guys enjoy the content. Black Ops 2 released with Transit. And most people don't like Transit, but there's also a fan base out there that think it's the best map. And I think that pretty much sums up the zombies community. Whatever opinion you have, someone's going to have a differing one. And so when I do talk about these maps, I'm taking them from the point of view of getting to round 100. And purposely, I did transit last when getting to round 100 on all the Black Ops 2 maps because I knew it was going to be bloody hard. And going into the map, you can already see I have the blue eyes and the shoddies. Love how cool the zombies levels look. Still to this day, I don't know if anyone knows how they're actually based, but I love them nonetheless. So first thing first, at the start of every game, I check if I have the diner roof build in the room next to spawn. I don't hear, so I have to restart. This is just because I have to leave the farm door closed and it can spawn in the farm. On the restart, I check for the diner part again and I get it this time. Now I can move on to building the turbine. This map has a big setup and so I'm going to do what I usually do and go over it really fast. And so here I build the turbine. There's three parts and you have to build them each individually. So from further on, I'm not going to show each individual build of every part because it just takes a while. I leave one zombie on round one because there's a bank on this map if you guys remember and that makes things a lot easier for the setup i grab the diner part use the turbine to open the doors and then i completely avoid the bus and go the opposite direction it travels and straight towards town personally i think the bank is perfect on this map because it's hard to die in the early rounds anyway so it pretty much just speeds up the long setup process on buried however i think the bank is game breaking to an extent but trans and die rise are very unconventional maps so it kind of works for those two maps i think this lava here was put here to stop what i'm doing right now but if you do go to the far right or the far left if you're coming out of town you can easily run over the lava even if you don't have jug i then enter the town open this door throw a grenade at the bank door which then explodes opening the bank door and then grab a considerable sum of around 30,000 points. I actually run out of points in the bank here, so I'm kind of glad I got round 100 this game. I then open this door, use the turbine to get stamina up. Now, you don't actually get stamina up until the power's on unless you leave the turbine there. I then use the turbine again to get Juggernaut and then make my way to the power, which is in this direction of the fog. Again, I'm just making my way through running. I open this door and grab the AK-7 for you. Once in the power room, I then have to build the power switch, which to be honest is kind of stupid because all the parts are like right next to the switch and so i do build the power but i accidentally forget to turn it on and by the time i realize i've already gone past the maze and then i go past the farm and then i make my way to the diner because i want to get speed caller and the galva knuckle so i have to eventually go back and turn on the power here using the turbine again i get speed caller and then use the diner part to open the roof on the diner and then grab the galva knuckles which are so important on this map for a number of reasons number one being the denizens which i know most people hate them wholeheartedly and I kind of do as well but at the same time you kind of need them for this map to work. I then make my way back to the bus depot and grab the M16 on the way and my first part to the jet gun. I grab quick revive and also a new turbine. This is important to get the pack-a-punch open. I make my way back to town because it has the only buildable where you can actually build the jet gun. Now this is where I think transit does become pretty cool. I actually quite like transit. I feel like it's one of those maps where when you first play it, you're like whoa this is kind of cool like it's mysterious 
serious and then you get to that stage where you've played a game you're like oh it's too hard it's pointless nothing even kills the zombies the jet gun sucks but then once you get through all of that and you realize where all the parts are there's a cabin in the woods with one of the jet gun parts you realize how to use the jet gun that's when transit becomes fun i then take the turbine to the power room and place it here this opens the pack a punch door i also finally turn on the power and grab my third part for the jet gun now i did move from round one to round two because i needed extra points to pack a punch both my weapons and with the bank door open i can now enter the pack a punch room and also if you didn't know you can juggle the parts just like this which is kind of fun but sometimes they glitch through the floor so i wouldn't recommend it so firstly i pack a punch the pistol and then i pack a punch the m16 i add my third part from the jet gun that i got from the power room i then use one of the cooler functions on this map where you can use a denison next to a green light so a denison will land on your head hit you once and then turn into a portal which will then teleport you to a random other green light around the map i did this because the last part of the jet gun is at the maze which is really far away from town usually when i'm going over lava i use the mustang and sally's to get across it faster here i accidentally shoot a rock next to the lava and nearly down myself and then denison's are just jumping at me left right and center but luckily i do survive and i make it to the maze which to be honest isn't really a maze but it is really cool because if you played this map for the first time you're like let me just run through the cornfields and then you just find nocturne tone i mean that would be so cool i love the easter eggs on this map the cabin in the woods nocturne tone and knock does have the last part for the jet gun so i pick it up here and then i could build the jet gun and the jet gun which i really like but also kind of dislike is that the jet gun doesn't take a spot of one of your weapons it takes a spot of one of your buildables so i can't use the right shield because i have the jet gun but still it's kind of an equal trade-off there and so finally i finish round two which is kind of crazy to think i went back into a game after i got into round 100 in this just to show you guys this area that i'm training in so you don't open the farm door there and if you follow this fence here there's a denison sign so as long as you stay within these denison signs no denisons will hit you so this is the whole training area that you have so it's quite a large area but there's a lot of zombies and a lot of zombies really fast because the spawns are quick here so for the early rounds i just use the galva knuckles because i found i ran out of ammo really fast and because transit's so massive it takes a while to get back to get some m16 ammo so i use the galva knuckles to around 13 because they're so strong that they're a one hit kill to around 13. from round 13 to 18 i then use the m 16 if you didn't know on black ops 3 when you pack a puncher it, it goes from three bursts to fully automatic and honestly it's gonna sound really stupid but the reload on the m16 and that style of reloading is super satisfying and so that's another reason why i grabbed the m16 to be completely honest but also it does have the noob tube which is really good with the insta kill and then from round 18 plus i just trained the zombies and used the mustang and sally's a very iconic weapon of course and very fun to use whilst also being strong. To save Mustang and Sally ammo, I do use the noob tube when I get insta kills on these lower rounds from about round 50 below. And as you can see, the noob tube has a crazy radius. You don't want to get too close to it, otherwise you will down yourself. But I'm shooting in the middle there and it's killing every single zombie that's spawning in in this, this area. And insta kills are very common on this map, so you do get to use the noob tube a lot, so it's a lot of fun. When you do run out of ammo with the noob tube though, you can use the pistol and I get a red screen here like an absolute idiot. I didn't know that the insta-kill actually ran out there for a second. When the Avogadro spawns in, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but I might be wrong. This is why I grabbed the Gavin Knuckles, because it's just a one hit, and then a second hit, and then he's dead. So he's really easy to take out, not really much of a boss, to be completely honest. And I'm very thankful for that, because this map is quite hard, just on its own. Whenever I was forced to run out into the Denison zones, which is quite a lot, especially when the boss is in the middle there, I would always just turn around and hit the Denison. At round 44, I still use the Mustang and Sally's. This thing kills four hordes of zombies at round 44. That's pretty interesting insane on a game like black ops 2 and then when i'm not using the mustang and sally's especially when i run out of ammo i just use the jet gun and i'll go over the jet gun because this wonder weapon definitely has the largest learning curve out of any wonder weapon it actually takes a lot of skill to use and it took me a long time to learn i was doing all these bizarre combinations with it because when i went back to black ops 2 to look at how to get to round 100 on a lot of these maps, I have to say the guides that I found were pretty shocking. No one really went into depth, not, not any videos that I could find on how to actually use the jet gun properly. So I would just watch, you know, world records and things and just try and look at what they were doing. But the jet gun, so much of it is you can't see what you're actually doing. So pretty much you just have to knife and then it's like a two second wait and then you use the jet gun <laughs> It's and then you just tap it. So 
I, I think this is actually technically a glitch, but everyone's fine with it being okay for world records and things. Otherwise, it's pretty much impossible to get to round 100 unless you just use the bus with the barricade at the front of the bus that just plies through the older zombies. But finally, I got used to it, and I'm sorry, that was a terrible example. But it, it is literally just knife and then wait two seconds and then hold the suck button. At round 77 though, something that's never happened to me before happened. I, I, well, I'm not sure what really happened. I think I was maybe just a second delayed on my jet gun. But I sucked myself into a horde of zombies and went down. But luckily on transit, when you go down, you keep all your perks except for quick revive. And I actually have no idea why. If you know, le let me know in the comments. I think it's something like you do a challenge in the game and uh, like traveling a certain distance or something just let me know in the comments why you do keep all your perks except for quick revive on transit there are some slower zombies and so this allows me at the end of round 77 to leave a few zombies and then get quick revive at round 78 i checked the scoreboard i have 14,000 kills i'm going to keep that in mind to see at round 100 to compare at the beginning of round 87 everything kind of just goes wrong for a second you can't sprint with the jet gun if you didn't know so i couldn't sprint away then and i didn't expect the zombies to hit me from my my back left side then but again i keep all three perks except for quick revive so i just leave one zombie and get quick revive again in the high rounds i don't use the noob tube i just use the mustang and sally's with the insta kills and you can see where the zombies spawn from there's literally four positions that they spawn from on this map and so you can just spawn kill them with the insta kill and the mustang and sally's and it's really satisfying and the crazy thing even with this insta kill this round took me 22 minutes because with the jet gun essentially you're almost like using a buffed melee weapon that's always a one shot kill and you can kill up to three zombies with it every time but i mean that's really not that many kills but finally i do hit round 100 it took me just over 11 hours so not the longest round 100 i've ever done but still a while and that's actually kind of crazy it's not the longest seeing that you do just get so little kills with the jet gun but i guess you're constantly getting one to two to three kills and so here i put my m16 in the fridge just because i've never ever done that before and i thought it'd be fun and so that just leaves us how many kills did we get at round 100 we had 30,000 kills so at round 78 we were halfway there to the amount of kills that we needed which is kind of crazy when you think about it if we look at the leaderboards i'm 1925th in the world and the leaderboards are completely glitched on pc a roller my friend who was higher than me on the leaderboards said he's never even played transit on this on this game but if you do look at the leaderboards here every single one of those people above me are glitched i'm sure there's probably like 500 legit ones in there so i'd say we're probably top 500 around there for round 100 on pc but that was round 100 in transit and honestly i did enjoy that it's quite a lot of fun once you get the jet gun down pat it's one of those maps that once you know what you're doing that's when you start having a lot of fun Die Rise is a similar map to Transit. The thing that Transit and Die Rise have in common is they're both very unconventional. Both maps are really hard to traverse. Transit, you have to wait for a bus, and on Die Rise, you have to wait for lifts. But in that, they do have a special quality to them, certain uniqueness that make these maps kind of special. So straight off spawn, I go to the very bottom of the map by using the lift that just slams down. It is important to note that there are armored zombies on Die Rise, so they're a bit scary sometimes. Sometimes and I just dodged his double hit on me. I then finish round two on this corridor and then make my way with this big jump across to the other building. I then open the power room door, but then I remember there's a bank on this map as well in the shower. I never knew this back in the day. I'm quite a new player to Die Rise, so this is kind of fresh opinion. No nostalgia here. I then grab the first part for the liquefier and then make my way to the buildable. I see Juggernogs there, which is perfect. You want to get a good Juggernog elevator because the elevators are random with the perks and if you get an elevator in a whack spot then it's gonna be really hard to get your perks back if you go down now there are parts of this map that are completely like a maze so i grab the ak 7 for you and i always just head on the very edge of the building there so i actually know where i'm going no point going anywhere central otherwise you're just going to be in a maze and completely confused i then start building the liquefier there's four parts again it's kind of just like the power on transit it's kind of unnecessary but it is awesome that you can get the liquefier at round four because this thing may be one of my favorite wonder weapons now in my last video i said the baby gun was my new favorite wonder weapon but i don't know the liquify is pretty cool man i then grab double tap and juggernog which is awesome timing i'm getting pretty lucky this game so far now at this stage in the game i want to go upstairs and the only way to do that is wait for this lift to just drop a little bit and i can understand people being annoyed by the lifts 
especially if you're a new player and you have no idea what you're doing. But as someone who's now played Dry Rise quite a bit after getting round 100, I don't mind the lift system. I actually think it's pretty easy and it creates a bit of excitement, especially when you've just gone down and you're waiting for a lift to appear. I don't know, that's just a personal thing. It just makes things a little bit more spicy sometimes. I then grab Quick Revive. Once I gain 6,000 points from camping in this position, I then do the jump of faith onto the mattresses. If you jump right in the middle, you take no, no fall damage. And then I make my way to this power symbol and then I have to traverse downwards, which is always scary. And I downed myself a lot of times going down this way when I first started playing this map. I then grab the Galva Knuckles, which I love. One of my favorite things in all of Black Ops 2. I always wait until the coast is clear for this jump here because this is where you will go down. The jump onto that barrier there. I, I really ended my game way too many times. It's so embarrassing. Just from that one jump. Now the spawns on this level here are by far the fastest, but I still want to get the A and 94. So I have 5,700 points, which is close enough to getting pack a punch. So then I drop down, grab the A and 94. And this gun is amazing. I love the A and 94 so much in this game. And then I realized it's one of those flapjack rounds. Is that what people call this boss? I don't know, like Nova Crawlers 2.0. But if you use the Galva Knuckles on every one of them, then you get a free perk. Or if you just don't miss a bullet, you'll get a free perk. So I got Speed Caller there, which is awesome. That's a great perk to get from them. The one perk I don't want to get is Who's Who, because if I get Who's Who, it basically means if I go down, I've lost the game. I think most of you guys know that Who's Who is pretty bad, especially on a map like Dairos. And as you can see, I have to do another big jump onto one of the lower levels of the map. The only thing I need now is Pack a Punch, so I have to actually find out where the hell that is. Luckily, I do find the Pack a Punch. It was in the second building on the second last floor. The elevators are kind of confusing, and I think that's because the map in general is quite confusing. And so usually I just hope I get Jug and Pack a Punch in really easy elevators to navigate. Because even though I've gotten round 100 on this map, I still don't know this map off by heart at all. I often just take the same routes over and over. Here's my attempt of a smiley face with the AN94 and unfortunately there's like a little bit of a glitch there so my smiley face kind of turns into into a bit of a Frankenstein there. So for the early rounds I just abuse the powerful AN94. I always just sit right in this position here and the zombies only come from the window behind me and right in front of me. There's two spawns on this layer and so it makes these spawns ridiculously fast and it's really fun man. I really like Die Rise. I, I don't know why Die Rise gets so much hate to be honest. And I think it has changed a little bit with time. People do see Dairai's and they seem to show it a bit more love. Now going off all that positivity, only something bad can happen now. And yes, I do get my earliest down I think ever on one of these videos, I go down at round 24 and it was kind of a stupid down. It was just a mass spawn out of that one window. Normally you can hold that position until about round 28, but there was just like five zombies that all came out of that window all at once. But I was pretty confident of die rise. So I wasn't too annoyed that I went down around 24. I did, however, start getting a little bit more worried when Juggernog took ages to appear in the elevator. And you got to remember on Black Ops 2, you're a two hit down without Juggernog, which is terrifying. And also just the one weapon in general just doesn't work at as well just on flat surfaces especially in the earlier rounds when the zombies are all scattered but finally juggernog does arrive and this is exactly what i mean when things get a bit spicy because of the elevators i think it works well on die rise because you do have this liquefier which is a really good wonder weapon and works at all rounds if you had the jet gun for example then the elevators would be incredibly painful to get your perks back from this boss round i get another perk and this time i get speed caller and i just decide i'm just gonna get all my perks from the boss rounds now because really once you have jug you're pretty safe five rounds later from my next boss round i get quick revive the bosses on die rise are a two hit with the gava knuckles forever for these early rounds, I just use this liquefier back and forth like this. It's kind of hard to chain the zombies with this liquefier because the spawns aren't as quick. But the spawn down the bottom here where the max ammo is are a lot faster. So sometimes I just go down into this corner here and then just let this liquefier do its thing. At round 40, I then get mule kick. And at round 44, I get double tap. The high round strategy that I like to do is to shoot this liquefier right onto the wall there. And then I sit down the bottom here. It feels the safest for me. Um, it can be a little bit hard to get power up sometimes. So I do try to shoot the liquefier as close to the wall as possible. So then no zombies die away. So then I could just quickly jump up 
and get a max ammo like that. And as you can see, this is very chill. You can just sit here and every now and then just shoot this liquefier. It's actually a really easy round 100 without being completely mind-numbing. It's quite a good balance. And like I said, I just really like Dairaz. I think the Wonder Weapon is seriously brilliant. And I think the map isn't designed that poorly, to be honest. I think it just adds more excitement. And yes, I'm not going to lie, when I was first playing it, I did die to fall damage quite a lot and I was getting kind of frustrating. But again, it's kind of like transit. Once you get good, well, I mean, you're always going to enjoy something once you get good. But sometimes that's not always the case in zombies. There's a lot of Cold War maps that when you get really good at them, it's just the same thing over and over and there's no real skill level to really break anymore. With Black Ops 2, there's always something to do. There's always another skill level that you can reach. And it's never so easy that you can just switch off your brain. One of the most satisfying things on Black Ops 2 is using the Packer Punch AN94 and getting an insta-kill on Diarize in this exact position. It's like using a hot knife through butter. It just feels it just feels really smooth and really nice. And it really makes the rounds go a lot shorter. Unfortunately, in this situation though, I do kind of get stuck with my own sliquifier. The puddle it makes can sometimes just, just make you slide around. At round 87, I was kind of just minding my own business. Then three zombies just jumped over from the ledge, which can happen. Uh, it was just really bad time that three of them did at this exact same time. Luckily in this position, you always have an out. You can always just go right down the bottom of the map. Now this is where things get a really intense. Now you can see as soon as I get to Juggernaut, it goes down. Horrible timing. So now I have to wait for it to go back up. So round 87 with no Juggernaut and waiting for the lift to come up. Pretty scary, man. I'm not going to lie. I really thought I was going to die, but I saw it coming up and grabbed it last second. Perfect timing. And like I said, once you have Jug, you're pretty much set for this map. Uh, but here it does get a little bit intense the liquefier, even if it doesn't kill the zombies at least it makes them slip a lot and so it really does just change the physics of the game a lot this liquefier that's just why i like it so much i leave one zombie at the end of round 87 luckily i went down towards the end of the round i then grabbed double tap and quick revive at round 92 i use my an 94 to defeat the boss round and i didn't miss a bullet somehow i'm not sure how i did that and so i get who's who which is terrible so pretty much this means if i go down again i lose the game so this is what it looks like to do the high round strategy times 2.5 and it does look pretty pretty cool and you can see i'm just shooting here and there with the liquefier. you don't have to shoot much at all just one shot right into that corner of the wall there and that's the high round strategy things can definitely go wrong the zombies can lag and past round 100 the liquefier then becomes a two-shot kill but if you do want to get to round 100 this is definitely a viable strategy and finally the zombies die out and i hit round 100 it only took three hours on die rise and it was just a lot of fun like i've said quite a lot i genuinely really like die rise and I'm kind of confused where all the hate comes from. I personally didn't play it when it first came out. I was more of a transit and town kind of guy because I didn't buy the DLC until much later on. And maybe I didn't play Die Rides because I feel like it is kind of hard for beginner players. But I did get a boss round on round 100. So I got to round 101, which is pretty cool. And then I just deposited a lot of money into the bank because if you guys didn't know, and I didn't know this for a long time, if you deposit money in the bank on one map, it carries over to the other two maps. Because because there's a bank on transit, buried, and die rise. And to end the game, I dolphin dive off the building. First of all, I jumped down the elevator. So I do get four downs here, uh, but two of them were the actual downs rather than just jumping off the buildings. And if we look at the leaderboards for die rise, I'm 716 from PC. So that's pretty good, I would say. And there would definitely be a lot of hackers above me. And so I just want to say I really enjoyed die rise. I thought it was a lot of fun. Personally, I didn't play very much of it back in the day. So nostalgia's not guiding that. I just enjoyed it. It was a good map. Now, if you've seen my video where I got to round 100 on every Treyarch Zombies game, I got to round 100 in Mob of the Dead. But for this video, I did it again. And so things are different. I'm going to go over it really fast though. So if you haven't seen that video, you'll still get to see round 100 in Mob of the Dead. And if you did see that video, this will just go really fast. And to me, Mob of the Dead is still my favorite Zombies map. Like I said earlier in the video, I judge these maps based off going for round 100 or just high rounds in general. I'm not really considering just playing casually. But that's just me. If you have a different opinion, on what's your favorite map that's all good we can all live harmoniously together and no one needs to be murdered and i do preface that because people do have very strong opinions on zombies obviously i was joking when i said murder but people do genuinely get pissed off when you say a statement that they don't agree with so if you're like me and you watch the smith players you may have come across his video where he did a retrospective on mob of the dead and the title of that video is mob of the dead the dawn of zombies golden age 
and he talks about how Mob of the Dead revolutionized zombies to a large degree, and that we really have Mob of the Dead to thank, and in regard, Black Ops 2, for the making of such a good zombies as Black Ops 3 zombies, where I'd argue every single map on Black Ops 3 is awesome. And yes, I know people hate on Zetsubu, but I love that map. So I think if we put nostalgia aside, we can still at least say Black Ops 2 is good for being brave and outside the box and not making bland zombies maps and really pushing the envelope until finally they found a lot of success with Mob of the Dead, which sparked the flame of Black Ops 3, which like I said, I don't think has a single bad map. So sorry, they were just my thoughts on Mob of the Dead. I really like this map, as you can tell. And now let's get right into the round 100. I'm going to skip quite a lot of stuff and just show the main parts of this map. You could see before though, I was using the afterlife to turn all the switches on. And I'm sure 99% of you guys know what the afterlife is and what it does. So moving on, I've already done one dog head and now I do my second one. After I do my third, I can get the Hell's Retriever. I zap three generators, which opens a door in the warden's room, which gives me a part for the plane. I then grab Juggernog, get some points, and then buy the Thompson. This gun is only on Mob of the Dead, so that's really cool. And also, it is a really good gun. I then grab my second plane part from under the swirling stairs and grab Double Tap. I then grab the third part out of the washing machine. I enter the warden's room and get the Uzi, another really good weapon on this map, and then grab my fourth part for the plane. Of course, if you guys didn't know, the plane is to get to pack a punch you land on a bridge just off the coast of Alcatraz Island, otherwise known as a golden gate bridge. I then zap speed caller and grab it and also get electric cherry. I build the zombie shield in the cafeteria and on black ops 2 the zombie shield is really good. I then grab my final part for the plane and complete my final dog head. I then get the ray gun mark 2 at round 11 which is insane. It's super rare on mob the dead and can take forever and I also get the blunder get straight after it on the next hit. Seriously some of my best luck on mob of the dead and all my round 100 so far have been pretty lucky. I think that's some good karma because with the chronicles I think you guys saw that I was getting quite a lot of bad luck quite often. I build the Asset Gat kit, which then turns my Blunder Gat to the Asset Gat, and then I pick up the Hell's Retriever. I've always been kind of confused with this step when upgrading the Hell's Retriever to the Hell's Redeemer. So what I usually do is once I pick up the Hell's Retriever, I kill a full horde of zombies only using it, and then I take the plane to the Golden Gate Bridge, and I spend a whole two rounds using only the Hell's Retriever. This does take a while, but it does ensure that you're going to get the Hell's Redeemer, because I've had times where I've messed up one of the steps, and once you've messed up a step, it it gets really difficult to actually get the Hell's Redeemer. First of all though, when I get to the bridge, I pack a punch, the Ray Gun Mark II, and then also the Asset Gap into the... I'm going to try that again, the Vitriolic Withering. I then spend two whole rounds only using the Hell's Retriever because I'm paranoid. You only have to do one. I then use the Electric Chair to take me back to the Afterlife and get me off the Golden Gate Bridge and back to Alcatraz Island. The final step to upgrade the Tomahawk is to throw it in the lava. The only way to pick up the Hell's Redeemer is to go into the Afterlife and pick it up that way. And voila, we have the Hell's Redeemer. You can see that it is quite similar to the sword from Shadows of Evil. And I think the Tomahawk just adds so much to this map. It's by far my favorite specialist because it's not completely overpowered like a lot of specialists are and it does take somewhat some skill especially with the high round strategy I'm going to be doing for this video. So for the low rounds I just camp in the room next to double tap and keep the door behind me closed using the ray gun mark 2. The spawns here are really fast and they only come from the window and to my left. By round 40 the spawns are so fast that you can get quite overwhelmed and that's where I use the asset gap because if you guys didn't know which I'm sure most of you guys do the gun acts like a monkey bomb but sometimes not all the zombies get distracted so I do get a red screen here at round 41 and I have to open the door behind me. This isn't really good because you can actually camp in that room up until about round 60 and so this slows down the round 100 a lot but I'd rather not restart. It'd be fast just to keep on going and do the normal high round strategy for now on. Speaking of the high round strategy it still remains as one of my favorite so you use the acid trap and then run right next to the stairs here. If you go right next to the railing here the zombies will try and hit you but they can't and so I just use the tomahawk to clear those zombies out and so I'm going to speed this up and I'm basically just waiting for the acid trap to end. The way I tell it's ended is by looking at the shower heads. There's no good audible sign that signifies that the trap's over. So I just like to stare at the shower head. Once the trap is over, I walk slowly in this direction at first using my Hell's Redeemer whenever I have the chance. And then I do a turn backwards exactly the way I'm doing it in the exact same pattern every single time at this exact same speed. I know it sounds kind of nerdy, but it just works really well because by the time you get back there, you've used the Hell's Redeemer about twice and then you can use the trap again and then all those zombies behind you are going to die and then you just continue the strategy over and over. At round 70, unfortunately, I do go down, but luckily on this map, you do have the afterlife system, so there's no quick revive. When you go down, you just lose an afterlife and every round you go up, you get an afterlife back. So if I get to round 71, 
I will then have three afterlives again. But if I die two more times, then I will have a game over. But you can see there, I get out of that situation. With the Hell's Redeemer, it was really clutch there because, again... Black Ops 2, you're two hit without Jug. I then get Electric Cherry, use a gondo gondola, and then get Juggernog. I always do the exact same thing every single time when I go down, including I always take the gondola back. You really don't want to go through the underground passage back to the prison. That's pretty much a death trap, especially in these high rounds. One of the cool things on this map is that whenever you hit the trap, you don't know where the zombies are actually going to be. So they might be right in the doorway, and so you might have to diverge and run right across the trap. And the reason this is, is because there are walking zombies on this map map and so with walking zombies you really can't control the timing of the zombies whatsoever and i say this is cool because it just kind of adds some more randomness to the map like i kind of said about die rise and things i like when there's a level of not knowing what's going to be happening next obviously not to the point where it's just really annoying because it just ruins your game but i think to the level that it actually just makes it so you need to be more skillful at the game. I like that. And I think that's why I like this high round strategy on Mob of the Dead so much. But boom, 360 no scope, round 100. It took me nine hours to get round 100 on Mob of the Dead. Second time I've done it now. And this time I had six downs. Last time I did it, I had eight downs. I didn't show all the downs this game. Otherwise, it just, I don't know. I didn't want to make the video boring for you guys. But I did have six downs. I showed it there. And on the leaderboards, I'm 514th, which is kind of crazy. And yeah, I think I've, I can already say that I don't think nostalgia just blinding me on Mob of the Dead. I genuinely just think it's a fantastic map and I did lay out some reasons why I think that. And so let me know in the comments, do you guys like Mob of the Dead or do you hate it? Buried is the map that everyone regarded as the easiest zombies map up until when it released. Obviously now a lot of zombies maps are really easy, but at the time of Buried's release there was no map this easy. Because the map is quite a conventional map, the bank really broke it. But I do think this map isn't as easy as people make it out to be. I remember talking to my friend and he was like, yo we should play Buried, I, that map's so easy. One time I got to round 375 on it and I'm like what? The world record's 233 and the amount of times that people say oh yeah, all you need is the A94 pack punch and the paralyzer or the ray gun mark 2 and just camp at Juggernog. The highest round you're gonna get by doing that is 40. The map really isn't that easy. But if you do want to get to round 100, you can just use the buildables next to Juggernog. But I would say it's not as easy as just placing a buildable. You have to replace them constantly. So my take on this map is it is the easiest map on Black Ops 2, but it's nowhere near as easy as people make it out to be. And as a child, when I used to play this map, I learned the ramifications for alcohol with good old Leroy, the poor abused giant, who I really love on this map and I think everyone does. If you don't like Leroy, you are weird. And that is a fact. On the other hand though, I can see why people would be annoyed by always having to go and get alcohol after every round to open up the map but really once you get the paralyzer which is very easy to get from the mystery box it's very common then you don't really need Leroy at all anyway and Leroy has a lot of things you can do with him he's very innovative and I just love Leroy <laughs> like I said from my very first hit of the box and buried I get the ray gun mark 2 this map has some crazy rates with the wonder weapons I get the paralyzer and the ray gun mark 2 every five or so hits maybe that's just me but that's just my common experience maybe you guys find that buried actually takes a long time to get one of weapons but i'm pretty sure the rates are just way faster on buried and so while i was speaking i did turn on the power get juggernog and also give candy to leroy which then he stamps the box so it won't ever move i get the monkey bombs at round three which are a lot rarer than the wonder weapons on this map and then get the paralyzer at round four i then use the paralyzer to climb the building because i have no doors open in it and then grab speed goal and so once you do have the paralyzer you can traverse the entire map with without having to use Leroy again. I then grabbed Double Tap in the Witch's House. The Witch's House is awesome, man. I love it. I remember being a kid and playing this. I think I must've been like 12 or something or 13 and being terrified of the Witch's House. And I used to think it was a lot more confusing than it really was. Now that I'm older, I realize you just take the same path every time. The first time you go through the Witch's House, you're just like, what is going on? But ultimately you do get a free perk from it at the end. Now that I do have the Paralyzer as well, I don't have to run through the maze. I can just fly over it. I then grab Stamina Up and pack a punch the Paralyzer and the ray gun mark 2. And after killing all the witches, I then get quick revive, which is a really good perk to have, of course. I then make my way to a tunnel where it's actually kind of an underrated camping spot. I feel like most people don't know about it, but you can camp here, leave the door behind me, where I am right now behind me closed, and the zombies spawn from that window, and then also from the ground there. The reason I camp here instead of jug for the early rounds is that the spawns are a lot faster. So I came back to the witch house because I was running low on ray gun mark 2 ammo, and so I was hoping I would get mule kick from the witches, but sadly I fully ran out of mark 2 ammo 
ammo. And if you didn't know, the paralyzer and the grenades don't damage the witches. So I ended up just dropping the paralyzer and getting the AN94 anywhere. At the time, I felt like this would just speed up the rounds because the ray gun Mark II runs out of ammo ridiculously fast. And I found the paralyzer pretty ineffective of killing the zombies at the lower rounds. And you guys know the AN94 is the best gun in Black Ops 2, other than any wonder weapons. The irony is, as soon as I drop the paralyzer, then I get mule kick. I pack a punch the AN94, and this game's already pretty messy at the moment. Instead of a red dot, I got the unicorn head, which is kind of funny. I mean, I'm all down for any type of customization. Even with how good the pack a punch AN94 is, this position here, the spawns are just so fast that by round 26, you start getting getting into some pretty sticky situations. And so I do end up having to buy this couch here, and now I'm in a really bad situation because the zombies can spawn behind me. Pull out the ray gun mark too because this thing is obviously insane but it just runs out of ammo so fast because it shoots three bullets at one time or three lasers whatever you want to say. I do spot the max ammo and I go for it and in doing so I nearly went down and man I would have been pissed if I went down there because it would have just been completely unnecessary because at the end of the day I could have just camped the jug spot. Whenever I do these round 100s it's always an argument should I just be safe or do I go for speed. 99% of the time I choose speed over doing anything sensible. With my mule kick spot I try and get the power but instead I settle for the ballistic knife because that way I can run really fast to get all these parts. So I build the subsurface resonator and on the way to building the turbine I get the paralyzer which is perfect and now I can fly into the speed caller room, jump down and build the turbine in the church. So both of my buildables are really close to me in the juggernaut position so as soon as they break I can get them straight away. I pack a punch the paralyzer again and because I went through the witches I get another perk. At round 37 I realized I picked up the paralyzer from my mule kick spot which means if I go down I'd lose the paralyzer which means I'd probably just die and my game would be completely over and so I decided to drop the paralyzer and put it in my second slot so that way if I do go down I don't lose the paralyzer and so for the third time I pack a punch the paralyzer and so I do want to go over the high round strategy in depth but first I have to cover this I nearly go down because I just wasn't really focusing and the subsurface resonator broke and so this is why monkeys are so important and you can see the paralyzer doesn't do a lot of damage but the fact that it slows the zombies is huge and so I finally get that monkey off and if I went down there I would have died 100% so thank god I got that last monkey off but because I used all three of my monkey bombs and I'm not getting any kills with my weapons and only kills with my buildables I'm not getting any power ups so I'm not going to get any max ammo to get my monkey bombs back so at the end of round 63 I hit the mystery box and I do get the time bomb and the time bomb substitutes for the monkey bombs even though I don't have them it does and so now I can get the monkey bombs from the mystery box again there is another way to get max ammos on this map though and so I pick up the galva knuckles and then paint them on this position here I pick up the Galva Knuckles and grab some candy and then grab a key because I have to free Leroy first. I free Leroy, grab the candy back up and then bring Leroy to the bank. At the bank, I punch this location here and then I press on it, which will spawn a fire sale. It's meant to be a function in co-op where you can share money between your teammates. I lure Leroy right next to the fire sale, give him some candy, and he turns the fire sale into a random power up. I get a nuke this time, and it didn't really matter if I got a max ammo because I did get the time bomb like I said before. When I was playing, I didn't know that the time bomb actually substituted the monkeys. So the high round strategy is as simple as waiting for the subsurface resonator break, and then you just fly up and grab a new one and then bring it straight back down. And then whenever you think that the turbine's about to run out of power, so the turbine doesn't break straight away it just runs out of power and that's really dangerous so you always want to pick up the turbine before it runs out of power bring it up to where the subsurface resonator build is and then break it you want to break it yourself again it's just because you don't want it to run out of power and you don't realize and so the subsurface resonator is not being powered and then you will definitely go down if that happens and so yeah i grab the turbine and then grab a new subsurface resonator and then i'm back with the setup and that's pretty much the game the subsurface resonators last about anywhere from about five blasts to 15 i believe i didn't really count this game at the end of round 71 i do hit the box again and finally get the monkey bombs as you saw before they are kind of necessary if you do get trapped at round 77 i break the turbine and then something unfortunate happens and I kind of just slowly dropped down on a bunch of zombies. That was a really bad down. And like I said earlier, it's really important to have the paralyzer when you do go down because you can just fly above the zombies. And so I am glad that I traded out my mule kick paralyzer for a normal paralyzer, if you know what I mean. In this scenario though, I use a monkey bob instead and grab Juggernog. And Juggernog's really the only perk you need on this map other than quick revive because after all you're just using buildables and the paralyzer doesn't shoot faster if you have double tap nor do you fly faster if you have stamina 
stamina and you don't have to reload with the paralyzer. I do, however, grab quick revive and stamina up and then I get vultures aid from one of the witches. Now, I'm a pretty new player when it comes to playing buried. I did play it when I was younger and I was terrible at it, of course, because I was very young. And so this is a good example of a down that just comes with inexperience. I didn't realize that if you fall from a height like that with the paralyzer, you take a lot of fall damage. And so really, I was just a one hit. And like I said, about three times already, the Paralyzer is just god tier when you go down. It's so easy to traverse the map and get away from the zombies. And so I easily just get into the church, get a new turbine, get a new subsurface resonator. And then once I've set them up, none of the zombies can get to me and I can just easily get a Juggernog. And like I said, that's the only perk you really need. And so just like on Die Rise, I'm going to show you guys the high round strategy at 2.5 times speed. It looks super satisfying, just like with the Soliquifier. And honestly, I really enjoyed Buried as well. I mean, I've kind of said positive things about every map. I don't think I've said a single negative thing at the moment, but I just love Black Ops 2. I mean, and it's not nostalgia. I just genuinely enjoy it. And again, I'm taking it from a round 100 point of view. And I think round 100 is just really fun on this game. Each map is so unique with how you get to round 100. There's all these quirky little things and you can tell they really put time and effort into this game. And sad Sadly, I've become evil. I turn on Leroy. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. But yeah, round 100. Again, in the comments, let me know what you guys think of these maps as well. I don't think nostalgia was blinding me. I would 100% say it if it was blinding me, but I just genuinely enjoy these maps. And on the leaderboards, I'm 621st on PC in the world. And the craziest thing about this is I only had 2019 kills. And so it'd be pretty hard to spot all the hackers because theoretically you could get to round 100 with zero kills. And now thinking about it, that actually sounds like a pretty good video. The finale to Black Ops 2 was Origins, and it may not be my favourite map, but it's almost like it's in a different category. There's no denying there's something special about this map, and after all, it is one of the most loved zombies maps. And yes, I have gotten to round 100 on Black Ops 3 Origins quite a lot of times, but this was the first time I got to round 100 on Black Ops 2 Origins, and it seriously is a completely different beast. The map plays nothing like the Black Ops 3 version, and although Black Ops 3 Origins is very good looking, it doesn't have Black Ops 2 Origins grit and kind of surreal feel feel about it. And that's one thing that I always go back on when I think of Black Ops 2, and that's the atmosphere. Black Ops 2 atmosphere is always fantastic, and Origins is the epitome of that. So for Origins, I want to do something a little bit different and show you guys all my downs, because I went down a lot of times with Origins. This was by far the hardest map that I got to round 100 on, on Black Ops 2. So first down, round 82, and don't ask me while I was using the ray gun there. So often when I run out of ammo with my ice staff, I would go to the crazy place and train the zombies with the wind staff, until I got a max ammo, and then I would chuck a monkey bomb down and try and get the max ammo with my ice staff. Unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, like a dickhead, I just run into the middle of a bunch of zombies. I even had an insta kill, so I could have used my ray gun mark II just to kill those zombies in front of me. I then leave the crazy place and then die at round 69. This down at round 49 is pretty stock standard. Whenever you go down in this position, you are dead. For some reason, I thought I shot my ice staff and I didn't. And as you can see, as soon as you go down there, you're dead. And this has got to be top three fails on Origins for me. That's how many fails I have. And this fails bad. I have one shot left of my ice staff. All I need to do is hit all of the Templars with that one shot and I accidentally miss. I throw down a monkey bomb thinking maybe I can kill the Templar with my ray gun mark too. And then I fully panic as zombies start getting in the way. And then if you didn't know, monkey bombs are super questionable on this game, especially on Origins, so I go down because of that. I have to give myself a bit of credit here. I'm not sure how I still had any motivation to keep going after that after that dismal fail, but I did try and keep on going. I had no ammo in my gun, so there was really no point, and then I went down round 90. Here at round 83, I come up from the crazy place. I just got a max ammo for my ice staff, and the zombies just spam spawn in. There's really nothing I can do here. I try and throw a monkey, but I died. The mud just slowed me down. This map's epic, man. Here at round 52, I just lost focus. Really quick fail. <laughs> round 52. Now this, I would probably say, is my worst fail. Round 98, I failed. Round 98, I still remember this. And then it took me a few more... It took me like four more days after this fail to get round 100, where I could have just done it then and there. Here is a good example of the monkey bomb just completely glitching out at round 77. Actually, this might be the worst fail. There's a zombie blood right in front of my face, and then my PC gets an error and tabs me out. Another down in the 70s, and again, it's in this position here. And like I said, as soon as you go down in this position, you are fucked. There's no way out of it. And then this is where a lot of glitches happened. I just got stuck between the box and the path, I guess. 
And then this is so frustrating. It's round 10. I have a zombie's blood. Zombies shouldn't be able to recognize me, but for some odd reason, they just start attacking me and it caught me way off guard. And then I just have an impossible angle to go through. And then at round 85 here, here is my final fail. And so a total of 12 fails. I guess that makes up for all the good luck I had on the other maps. Origins has the biggest and hardest setup out of all of the Black Ops 2 maps. And so I'm going to go over it really fast and I might skip a few things because if I show the whole of the setup, it will be very boring. I'm not saying the map's boring, I just think from a viewer point of view. So firstly, I get generator 1 on and then dolphin dive and get 25 points from the bottom of quick revive. I grab the M14. At the end of round 3, I leave the spawn room, dig a hole and get the M1216 or however you pronounce the shotgun. I then pick up the ice disc and also the dirty stone. I see the robot coming and both foots don't have a opening. I enter no man's land and pick up the MP40. I pick up some claim wars whilst I'm at generator 4 and then grab Juggernog when the generator is done. I complete my first black box, grab stamina up and then do my second black box. I grab my first wind bar and the wind disc. Then I grab the SCG, which I would say is just under the AN94 for the best gun in Black Ops 2. That is in my opinion. I grab some Semtexes and you can see that I really am using every single part of this map to my benefit because there's always something at every part of the map that's going to help with the high round strategy. Luckily at round 8, I do get a zombie blood and so I can just easily take out the Panzer. I complete my third black box, build the shield and get speed cobalt. I grab my first, second, and third ice part, and then my second wind staff part, and finish my final black box. Pack a punch the STG and get the thunder fist. And using the thunder fist, I clean the stone. I pick up the clean stone and bring it back to where I found it. Drink up some quick revive and then get double tap from the reward box. I then collect some souls with the thunder fist and get the G strike grenades. I travel to the crazy place and pick up the ice stone. I then build the ice staff and do the ice puzzle with it and then destroy one, two, and three gravestones. And finally, I can pack a punch my pistol. The reason I couldn't before is because you can't destroy the gravestones with the pack a punch pistol. I shoot the ice orb and then insert the ice staff to upgrade it. I do finally upgrade it by killing a lot of zombies and letting the souls be sucked up. Finally, I grab the last wind staff part, get the stone and then build the staff. Upgrading the wind staff is a lot easier than the ice staff. Firstly, I just have to do the wind staff puzzle, which I know off by heart because I've done it so many times. And it is a lot simpler than the ice staff puzzle. That thing is, I have to Google every single time. I finish the puzzle and then I have to just redirect the smoke to the center of the map. I do the first one and then the second and then the third. I shoot the wind orb and then place the wind star and then finally upgrade the wind star. And now I'm completely set up, which is awesome. Although Origins is a very popular map, I don't think many people know about this position here. So I'm just going to take you there. So pretty much if you sit between these two holes here and use a three shot charge of the ice staff and then pull out your claim war, the spawns are really fast. It's by far the fastest spot on the map and it's not that hard to do really. And I do use the claim war because I'm pretty sure it kills the zombies just slightly faster because the game thinks that you're damaging the zombies with the claymore or something when you hold it out. I think it is slightly a glitch, but it only helps the game just a little bit. And so as you can see, the spawns are really close here. And generally, it's kind of just a fun strategy. I actually enjoy it a lot. When you do get an insta-kill, you can just spam the semtexes over in that direction. I always tend to look in that direction. The zombies are spawning behind me, but I tend to look in this direction because the pans are spawned that way. And you just never know when one of those guys will pop up. And speaking of panzers, I eliminate them by using my pistol and just spamming them in the head. I do have double tap, which makes it a lot easier. Just got to make sure that the ice staff doesn't run out under you. This strategy is all about timing with the ice staff. After a while, you just get used to how often you have to use the ice staff and also how long you can hold the claim war out for. In this situation, there are Templar zombies on the map. And so I'm trying to use as much ammo and get as many kills as possible before getting the max ammo from the Templar zombies. I purposely avoid all the nukes because the nukes will kill the Templar zombies and I won't be able to get the max ammo. But like an idiot, I just wasn't focusing on the game and the Templar zombies ran across me here. I finally see them and I'm like, oh shit, I need to run. I need to run because I really need this max ammo. And if they're not on a generator, you don't get the max ammo. And I accidentally kill them, which then forces me to do the high, high round strategy really early here. And so that's training in this position here. I'm sure if you've watched any high rounding on Origins, you would have seen the strategy before. Pretty much just looping the zombies until you get up to this position up here, shooting down a three shot of the ice staff. What I do is I hold the claymore out, go into the ice storm. And then when it's about to run out, I then run back around. Do another loop of the zombies. I also did hit the tank there and I'll go over the tank strategy later because I never knew about that and it's really helpful for getting round 100, though it's very hard. And so again, then I use the ice storm and then repeat. 
I wouldn't say Origins is a hard map purely mechanically. What I mean is you just run out of ammo and then there's no way to kill the zombies. Except you can use the tank, which I didn't know about until much later on. But you can see as early as round 76, I run out of ammo of the ice staff. So I switch it out for the wind staff and then use the wind staff until finally I get a max ammo, switch it back out for the ice staff and then grab the max ammo. So like I said before, ammo is the most important thing on Origins when going for high rounds. I think the world record's only about round 140 or around 150 at the moment because you just run out of ammo and then you have to do the tank strategy and then that crashes your game and also just takes forever. And so whenever I got an insta kill, I would try and kill at least three hordes entirely just using the insta kill. I did however get my first down on round 87 and I'm not entirely sure what the hell went wrong here but I ended up not being able to run through my ice storm to do the loop and so I looked to go back the other way and then that was completely blocked off and then I was just doomed. And when you go down on this map it's very rare to get yourself back up and get your perks back because because a lot of the time the zombies just stand on you when you're down. Thankfully this time that didn't happen and I could use my G-Strike grenade. I then use a second G-Strike grenade to get Generator 4 on and get Juggernog. And then from there, I can just take my time and get the rest of my perks back, except for double tap. And so now I'm going to go over the tank strategy. And if you do want to get to round 100 on this map, unless you just rely on really good RNG of your max ammos, this strategy you have to learn. And I really didn't know about it because like I said, the guides on Black Ops 2 for high rounds really aren't that great at all. So pretty much just wait for the tank and then you just take your time and make sure you're a good couple meters away from it because it does get faster as it comes down the hill. Then I train the zombies at this location. And once all the zombies are trained up, I then use my pistol to travel really fast down the hill and then I hit the tank and the tank will kill pretty much all of those zombies depending on how fast you get down that hill with your pistol. The ray gun mark 2 you can travel a lot faster with when you shoot backwards like that but I couldn't be bothered getting the ray gun mark 2 so I just used the pistol. And so here is an example of when it goes wrong a zombie spawn in front of me. I should have I should have stayed to the right of the spawn point obviously the spawns don't change every time so that was my bad and luckily <laughs> I go down in a similar position I did before and so no zombies stick on me and then I have time to use the G-Strike again. When I'm going for Juggernog this time, the bloody robot goes over my head at the complete worst timing. I would have lost my shit, I'm not gonna lie if I failed again in the 90s. This, this would have been like number 4 in the 90s and I'd failed about 3 times in the 80s as well. The generator wasn't still on so I had to use another G-Strike. But finally, I do hit round 100 on Origins. Maybe my favorite round 100, not because it's my favorite map, but because it was so hard to do and it is such an iconic and ruthless map. It's not an easy map whatsoever and my younger version of myself who played this when they were like 13 was dreadful and couldn't get past round 10. And it seems like whenever I get to round 100 and use only my weapon with some tank kills here and there, I always get about 30,000 kills. And you can see I have a 1 million score there, which is satisfying as hell. And on Origins, I was 927 from the world, which is surprising to me. I thought I would be higher than that. And if we do look at the all-time leaderboards, there are a lot of legit people. So maybe I suck at Origins and it shouldn't have taken me that long to get to round 100. But I guess the higher you scroll, a lot more hackers appear. And so hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. In my opinion, Black Ops 2 is genuinely just really good. And really fun and i don't think nostalgia is purely the only reason why black ops 2 is so loved i think it's a mix of nostalgia and also the game genuinely just being really good and so i'm just gonna have to see is black ops 4 better though the comment did say that and so i guess i will find out hopefully you guys did enjoy it. and if you got this far you guys are actually legends i really appreciate it